Right, hi everybody. Um, I'm going to be making Florentines today. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do this. So just hang with me for a second. I just want to make it that you can see what I'm doing without having my dismembered too far away. Let's see if we can move that closer. I've got, <laughs> wait, let me show you. I've got a whole um, bunch of tubs and things that I'm trying to use to keep this whole story in focus there we go how's that better great okay excellent right I don't, we don't have any eyeballs on here yet but it, just in case you're watching this later i'm just going to tell you what we are doing and how we're going to do it um let me just turn this around right we have one live eyeball okay so here's my recipe the recipe is on my website hi lisbeth <laughs> Um, so you don't have to worry about that. We've got our almonds. We have raisins, uh, chopped up uh, cherries, uh, those glacé cherries, and candied peel. I'm going to come back to this in a minute. Um, it's 50 grams of caster sugar, um, 30 mils of flour. I didn't actually have it. The recipe calls for 30 mils of cream. I didn't actually have that, so we're just going without that. There's our chocolate for coating them. It is gone hard because it is. Wait, let me show you the weather. Oh, it's like a kind of misly, almost about to rain, windy day. It doesn't actually look like that in the picture, but that's what it is. And then here in my pot, I've got 60 grams of butter. Okay. Um, so just to come back to these raisins and things, if you don't have cherries and candied peel, and I know that candied peel and cherries are not everyone's favorite. You can just substitute with any dried fruit. Um, it all works just as well. It doesn't really matter what dried fruit you use. I've used chopped up almond, I mean chopped up apricots. I've used um, cranberries instead of raisins. Just as long as so the total would be for this bowl is 775 grams. So as long as you have 75 grams, I don't think it matters what fruit it's made up of. And if you didn't have any fruit, you could just make a nut one, I suppose. Um, I just think the fruit adds a bit of an interesting squishy sweetness to it. Okay, right, so I'm going to start, I just want to put my oven on. So again, I'm putting my oven on 180 and I'm switching on the stove to melt this butter. Right, while we are melting, so there is my, my, my butter, can you see it? <laughs> Rotate your phone, oh dear, it doesn't like me. Um, so while we're melting that butter, I just wanted to see how everyone is doing, check in. Um, I think it's all been a bit wild. We started full on homeschooling, which is not going my way, to be honest. Lots of maths, which I actually quite like, but um, I'm very good at explaining it. Um, also, what's happening here is um, on Wednesday. So this is what we will be doing on Wednesday. I am going to be doing a costing video. So also a live video so you can post your questions. It will also be at 10 o'clock in the morning and it will be working out how to determine the cost of the recipe. And then I think the following week, Wednesday, I will do another similar one with how to work out the selling price. So um, if you're interested, please tune in at 10. I'll make sure that the video stays up. I think it's important information. It is a bit dry. So I'm working on some ways to make it more exciting. Um, fun facts, anyone? Anyway, okay, and I'm gonna put you down again so I can do this. Right, hopefully you can all vaguely see what I'm doing. Okay, so my butter's in here. Once it's melted, which should be any minute now, I'm just gonna add my sugar. And what we want is for it to kind of caramelize a bit. We're looking for that kind of sticky caramel vibe. Um, so we, it's basically like just making a very simple caramel. Um, right, the butter is basically melted. So I'm using caster sugar, but you absolutely could just use normal sugar. I don't really see any difference in the terms of this recipe because it's getting melted. And we live in a time where you have to use what you have at hand. Um, right, so I'm going to mix it in. The recipe says mix it, uh, boil it until it's bubbling. I will, I don't know if you can see this. So it is starting to bubble. Go a little bit longer. Um, 
And I don't know anything about the history of Florentines. I don't know if anyone else does know. That all means post some information. Um, I'm sure you could make them with other nuts. It just needs to be kind of flaked. It probably says no, the only one that comes flaked like this is almonds. But if you had a way of cutting them, you could definitely make them with other nuts. Right, okay, this whole story is now bubbling. I'm gonna take it off the heat, let me just turn it off. I will attempt to not set the kitchen alight. That has happened. Well, I've, I'm very prone to setting these cloths alight on the gas stove. <laughs> it's happened quite a few times and last night my daughter woke up and she says, I'm having a nightmare, the movie's ready the house down again. So, you know, these things happen. Okay, so I'm going to put uh, all our fruit. So, as I say, I don't think it matters what fruit you use. Obviously the cherries make it quite colorful, but I don't think it's a necessity to have cherries. And I'm gonna add my flaked almonds. And then the last thing I'm gonna add is my flour. As I said, I did not have cream, so I've just actually left that out completely. Um, right, let's see how they turn out. If it's So for me, if a recipe calls for 30 mils of cream, I immediately roll my eyes inside my head because um, who has 30 mils of cream on hand, you know? Who buys a 250 milliliters of cream and then has 30 mils left? No, you use it, you use the whole thing. And also when I went to the supermarket, they only had one liter ones, and I was like, well, for 30 mils, I'm sure we can just leave it out. Um, but it's, it's the kind of thing I think it wouldn't really matter. Okay, so that's what our mixture looks like. I don't know if you can see that. Let me hold it up a few. <laughs> it's that same who's watching. Hello, Helen. Hello, Sharon. Um, how do I make that go away? It's, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so how's everyone doing? Is everyone bored out of their minds? Okay, so this is just a normal baking tray, and this is a non-stick mat that I have. It's like a silicon coated fabric that you can wash and reuse. That's why they look so incredibly scruffy. They are clean. Um, but if you didn't have that, you could use... Find it for you. You could use some baking paper, this kind of thing. It's also silicon coated. Um, but whatever it is, this becomes quite sticky so you don't want it to stick too harshly onto your trays because otherwise you spend your life gouging it off there. Okay, so the recipe says a teaspoonful. I'm just going to put a little spoonful on the tray. Something along those lines. It depends how big you want them. Okay, and they really don't look like much at this point. Because they spread quite a bit, you need to leave lots of space between them. I'm going to do six little ones on this tray and then while they're in the oven I will reheat the chocolate so you can see. They take eight minutes about in the oven um, to bake and become sticky and whatever. Okay, so as I say they don't look like much now, let me just show you. No, wrong way. How do I do this? Not very tasty. So they look like little, little piles of nuts. They don't look like anything right now. But just hang in with me for a minute. Okay, so I'm sticking them in the oven. Okay. So this is dark chocolate that I had melted earlier. Um, while those are baking, I'm just going to give you a quick talk of how to do your chocolate. So when you are melting the chocolate, you can obviously do it in a double boiler. So that means hot of water, simmering on the stove, put this over so the steam melts the chocolate from the warmth of the bowl. I'm going to do it in the microwave. Let's go over to the microwave so you can see. It's like having a, a pal in my pocket. Okay, there we go. So on my microwave, let's just see it there. Can you see the settings? It's very reflective. Okay, I want you to put it on a lower setting. So this is the watts that it has, but you could put it on like 30% power. Oh, not 10 minutes. Oh, la la. Sorry, 30% power, and then I would do like a minute at a time and just let it um, start to melt, then stir and again and again. Um, if you overheat it, it will become very lumpy and solid, and once you get to that point, there's not much you can do about it. You could add a little bit of oil to bring it back, but other than that, it's only if it's really just started. 
once it goes to that lumpy stage there's no coming back you might as well just throw it away um what you can do if you are very like um what's the word i'm looking for diligent <laughs> which i'm not you can stand at the microwave and do like 10 seconds on full power stir, 10 seconds stir. Um, but whatever you do just don't let it get overheated um, so you don't want to leave it in the microwave for too long at a time also you don't want to get any water into the mixture even a drop of water will also make it go hard and lumpy like that right let's really give it a stir three minutes there we go time flies when you're having fun so I don't know yeah um, if you want to comment and let me know what you have been baking I would love to, I'm just putting it down, free in my pocket, <laughs> so you can see um, it's starting to melt, it's like a little bit soft, but it's not really there yet, and because it was melted, it's now all kind of stuck in the bottom of this bowl, so I'm just going to put it back in again, um, so um, when I was deciding what to bake this morning, I put it because I was like oh what should I make what should I make and in the end it was kind of like a dead heat everyone wanted something different so I will be doing this week that's now and I think I will do the gnocchi which seemed quite a popular one um, and then the following week I will do homemade ice cream and churn recipe and then the last week I'm going to be making pies homemade pies uh, so that will probably be I think I might actually pre-video some of the information because making the puff pastry is a little bit of a consuming effort. Um, or if you want, you can just um, purchase puff pastry, which is much easier. But to be fair, there is nothing better than homemade. I absolutely love puff pastry. So I did, took those out for a little test run yesterday um, and they were delicious. I had to give my right kidney to Nita, um, who is the lady from Valley Baking. Her mom made them once for a class I did as the meal. Sorry, just getting my chocolate. And they were so delicious. I baked and baked and baked and pleaded for the recipe. And she did send it to me and she did say I could share it. So my kidney is not in vain, everyone. Woohoo! <laughs> right, okay, so there's our chocolate. And it's quite a lot of chocolate. It's 150 grams of chocolate. I would say you could just melt whatever and whatever's left you can keep for the future. It's easier to dip if you have more than you need. I didn't actually weigh this. Um, I just melted some in the bowl. Um, because we're dipping, um, you can dip it as deep and as much as you want, depending on your preference for the chocolate. Um, I forgot to put the timer on for the things. But let's have a look at them. Let's see what they look like and you can get an idea of what's going on in there. Right. So, oh, yeah. Very steamy. So you can see the caramel is starting to bubble and they are spreading nicely. The raisins are all that particular raisin is all swelled up. Um, but they're not quite there yet. You want them to have a nice kind of caramel brown color. That's what makes them so delicious. And if there are other things that you want me to bake, um, I would to. I have more or less bribed my children with chocolate and iPad time cooped up in my room today because they didn't want to be in the video and because it's not so nice outside nobody wanted to play outside either um yes so uh, yeah I'm, I'm just waiting now does anyone have any questions about anything that i've been saying just to go back to the castings so those videos i'm going to be doing on wednesdays um and I've been promising them for a while and I've been kind of avoiding them because it is quite a dry topic and it's quite difficult to just be out here in the world God, saying all these things are just like never ending and they are quite dull really. Um, so I'll try my best to make it as exciting as possible. But uh, so as I said, this Wednesday coming, so that's the day after tomorrow, I will be doing how to work out the costing. So that's you know some people find that easy some people find that hard it may be for you it may not um, the following week we will do how to take that price the base price and turn it into what are you going to sell it for that price and then I think the th third week after that I will try and do something also on 
um, running a home business and your profit margin and that sort of thing because um, I know a lot of people who are running home businesses are really battling at the moment so we might as well use our time as productively as we can although to be honest I'm finding it difficult to be productive I am finding <laughs> this lockdown fully exhausting oh hello oh oh shame um, so yes I don't know hopefully my recipe will live up to the one that you lost it is so difficult when you have a great recipe and or great memory of a recipe and sometimes it just doesn't live up to that expectation and it is so frustrating that is how I felt about those cheese straws I made the other day I have this memory of them I made them I ate them they were delicious everyone else loved them but they weren't like I remember them and I don't quite know what is different so yeah maybe it's just the the pleasure of memory <laughs> I don't know okay I'm sure these um Florentines are almost done. Let's take them out and have a look at them. Oh, oh no. perfect. Okay, let me see if I can hold them up for you. Oh, whoopsie. I think I just lost a rosin. So, can you see they're all sliding around on my non slip mat? Um, I'll have them down here. Can you see this? I can't see what you can see because it's all, all the lovely comments are in the way. And I'm going to take a cookie cutter. So now you can use any cookie cutter you like. If you've made bigger ones, if you like big wide flat ones, use a bigger cookie cutter. This one is, I think, about eight centimeters across, maybe a bit less. And I'm actually going to just, sorry if this is a bit wobbly. I just want you to see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so there it is. You can see it's all spread out. Who knows what's happening with it? It certainly does not look attractive. So I'm going to take my cookie cutter and I'm just going to harness it in, get all the bits that might be floating about in space into the cookie cutter. Okay. So to make that beautiful shape. There it is. Perfect. I'm going to do that with all of them and then I'm going to set them aside to cool and then I will show you how we dip them. Hold on a second. Um, well can you see that anyway for me this is the top top trick of this whole story and you can only do a few of these at a time it's the reason I didn't do a second tray because if they're cool while you're busy doing this they don't stay together so well these are already cooling a bit if you're having problems with that just take a whole lot and put stick it back in the oven so I don't know if you can see here those bits are now not so sticky anymore um, I might just shape them a bit and then put them back in the oven just to make sure they're all stuck together. I was talking too much as usual. Get in there. Okay. And I just love these. I don't know. I think it's the caramelly, nutty, yum, scrumness of them. Yeah. Okay, let me just stick them back in the oven for a few seconds. <coughs> it's kind of like making. Um, what are those things? Almond tools, where you, to shape them, you need them to be all, what are those other things? Um, brandy snaps. Brandy snaps. They are one of my nemesis items. So there are two or three things that I have tried many times to make, and I've just had no success with. One is brandy snaps. I never get that lacy, bubbly texture. And the other one is nougat. So if anyone has a good nougat, whoopsie, sorry, you're on the oven, which is why they're wobbling. Has a great nougat recipe to, to share with us, please. I have tried so many recipes, and every time, always the same. They are either too hard, like a hard toffee, or too soft, and I can't cut them, they're too sticky. And I, I pride myself on being able to bake pretty much anything, and though that is my nemesis. Um, okay. I'm just going to hold you up here again. Sorry, all the moving. Okay, so they're now in their lovely round shapes. What we want to do is to have them to cool down a little bit so that I can handle them and dip them. So just to cool them as quickly as possible. I'm just going to put them on a clean, cool metal tray. So it's just going to slide this across there. Uh oh, I'll switch the cable on. 
I'll just keep this careful as I mind because it's almost time for cup of tea. Okay. Once they're completely cool, then we can dip them. I'll show you a few options for dipping them. I'm just gonna turn the oven off so you don't have that background noise. Um I just want to I'm just gonna use so some of those of you that know me know that I'm very big on low waste and reducing my waste, which is why these are great. I'm just going to use some of this paper just so that you can see um, how it works and if it's really any different. It really isn't any different. Um, yes, the composting queen. I asked my new monitor around here. I went to a kid's party the other day and one of the other dads says to me, uh, if they had been to a party at our house and he says, ah, I see your husband's big into composting and you've got worm farms and I said to him, no, sadly, it's me, it's not my husband, I'm the composting queen. Okay, so there's just a piece of this paper, let's see if these will come off. Oh, there we go, so you can see there it's still warm, it's still soft, I'm not going to put it yet without falling apart. In here, maybe they'll cool even quicker. It's always the you know the magic of television. You want it to happen as quickly as possible so that everyone can see what you're doing. But um, obviously, if you had were at home, you could leave them to cool completely. Right. So once it is cool, and if you can, no, this guy's going to fall apart. Maybe this guy's better. You could also make them thicker. And I thought to myself because I was looking for a picture online because I didn't have a picture of one that I had made. I didn't actually find one that I wanted to use. Uh, it struck me that you could use, make them in a little kind of muffin tray. If you wanted them really thick, you could make them in a little tray like that. And then they would obviously stay in their little circle. Um, for me, I don't know, I've never done it like that, but I certainly saw some that looked like they had been done like that. They had that shape. Right, so here's our chocolate. Nice and soft and melted. It's not actually very hot anymore. It's cooled down a bit. As I say, it is quite a chilly day here but with the oven on it's quite warm in the kitchen um it's a bit of a lump of chocolate there right so once you do that you've got lots of options for how you want to dip it you could dip it sideways in and just have it half and half like that i like my underneath to be chocolatey but i also do tend to drop them in the chocolate this way so i'm just going to dip it straight in okay so that's chocolate all on the bottom there and then onto the paper okay and I've stuck it to chocolate side down oh la la it's not chocolate all on my phone chocolate side down so when it's cool the chocolate will set and I'll be able to peel it off the paper nice and easily um, let me just do it sideways on one for you if any of these guys are cool enough there we go so there he is for me sideways on can sometimes mask the beauty of these little gem like cherries and such but you could just do it like that okay sideways on or if you wanted more chocolatey kind of scoop and sideways and then onto the paper and then the last one I've seen people do they just kind of put the chocolate on the back and then set it this way around but I'll show you now with that one hopefully it'll be set enough for me to lift it in a minute um, this for me actually looks less neat than the one that has dried on the paper or on the silicon mat okay let me just wash my hands and then I will hopefully be able to peel that guy off and you can see yeah no he's not set yet um, anyway so that's the story. I let me just show them to you one last time. See these little beauties. So you can see they look like little jewel crystals. There's the guy that I put the chocolate on the back, and there's the guy that I put the chocolate on, dipped the back, and put him on the tray. Again, it depends how much chocolate you like. You could feasibly dip them completely in chocolate if you wanted. No, he's not set. Okay, so. I will post a picture of the re of the final products once I've made them all. If I manage to make them all before they get eaten by the, the natives. Those are my children. And um, the recipe is on my website. So if you go on to julieskakestudio.co.za, you'll see there's a whole bunch of menus. 
click on recipes and you'll see a drop down drip box will come up and you will see biscuits it's under that section there's a whole bunch of things there um, adding as quickly as I can because I think a lot of people are baking and they're looking asking me for recipes so I'm trying to add them all into that onto my website and I appreciate it if you go to my website because um, all the more traffic means more income for me and I hope you all have a wonderful day of baking and if you're in Cape Town snuggle up and have a hot chocolate with your Florentines because it's I think gonna rain quite a bit hopefully although I thought it was gonna rain in the night and it didn't so who knows um, and I'll see you soon okay bye